Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Under Rail. In the last episode, we explored two floors beneath the mutants' um, fortifications, stronghold, having snuck in here prior to that. Off screen, I think I figured out what to do, but I'm not sure. I didn't test it, but I did notice a room that we might be able to access down one level. So we're going to go back to the prior used to be submerged floor and take a peek. I also went back to our base and I sold a bunch of crap getting our inventory back to 82. We got about a thousand or so Charons and I picked up a few more uh, MK MK2 bolts, a few more EMP grenades, made some shock three bolts, some more flashbangs and we should be good to go. Before though we do anything else, eat our eel sandwich. Now, actually, it should be the stair. It should be the ladder. Tim, you go to. I still don't know if we take any falling damage. So, by trying to leap down there, don't really want to take falling damage. If we can avoid it. Let's head on down here. Okay. There was a room. This room, here. I don't think we accessed this computer terminal before. Let's see if we're able to use the key card we had here. If not, then I am going to have to go off screen and try to figure out what I do next. I think I killed all the robots now down here too. Looks like it. Anything else happen? No, nothing else I can think of. I didn't talk to anybody, didn't pick any other locks or anything of the sort. Okay, our key card does open that. I'm a little nervous about this statue. Well, let's go ahead and activate this. Lemco LC387. Welcome, guest. Please select one of the following. Let's, uh... Oh, we've already accessed the elevator. I guess we can talk about that anyway to make it easier for us to access it again. Error. Mechanical malfunction detected. Unable to open gate 2. Logging and dispatching technical support. In case of emergency, please seek a stronghold's help in order to gain access to Vault 2. Hmm... So this is nothing we haven't seen before then. We All we did was access, was open this area up, and this area. How can we access... How can we access... This? I don't think I can blow up doors. Was that correct? Like I can't attack them? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to use explosives to blow up a door. I don't think it works that way. Okay then. Oh, there was a climbing down that we didn't have access to before. I guess we're going to do this. This whole area probably used to be submerged. In fact, we can still see the drops of water for when this whole area was underwater. Okay, before we go any further, should probably okay we are still wearing our detection goggles just in case there's traps down here i can't imagine there will be any the whole area was after all encased in like it was under the ocean a rock shaped into the shape of a fork that's forked up a pool hello pool something is moving down there
This music always makes me nervous. Let's <laughs> see what else we have around the corner. Oh, I didn't bring a fishing pole with me. Or we could, maybe we could have gone. We could have done some fishing in this area. Oh, my fishing poles are back at my house. I like to not go there for some time if I can avoid it. We'll just have to remember that there's an under. Uh, there's a lagoon here. Okay. Nothing hostile, but nothing else either. Possibly two of them. Let's see if we activate this one. No. Can't access that box. There's no reason for us to stay here then. Let's just go upstairs and access the power. Stable neuro amplifier, wave amplifier, low frequency shield emitter, a plasma core, and electronic repair kits. We'll grab our plasma cells, fusion cells, tons of uh, electrical batteries here. And what is this? Oops, oh no! Two of them activated. I'm a little nervous will be the stealth when I click on this door as it pops up the options for us, so I'm gonna wait until this one turns around before I activate it. Okay, good. We can get out now if we need to. This arm used to belong to a Phil Bridges, judging by the name patch you had seen in the man's overalls. You can distinctively feel something solid between the man's index finger and thumb. A touchscreen mobile computer that can be folded in half up to two times, reducing its diagonal length to about 13 centimeters. Has no visible physical buttons or connectors, making this device pretty much nothing but a uniform smooth surface. I don't know if we even need to access any of this. I'm tempted to leave this here. We have the device we need. I don't think I want this powered on. What purpose would that serve? We can already access everywhere that the elevator would take us. It might... Uh, power substation. Can I use this electronic lock and seal these guys in that room? Nice, we can. This one is out of order. Lemco, LPSU, I4, LC, 387, hydrothermal generator output, less than 2 megawatts, power substitution unit output, unit 1, on, 320 kilowatt peak value, unit 2, off, power routing protocol, auto, attempt to boost the unit's power output. You see a single panel at the front of the unit you can open. As the outer casing is made of actual stone and cannot possibly be handled by a single person, you open the panel and inspect what is inside. There is not much you can do here, unfortunately, for what you see before you is a puzzle far too complex for you to solve, and far too dangerous to even try. You close the front panel and wipe the grime off your hands. Alright, so we're not able, our electronic skill is not high enough to interact with that. I suppose, what would that have gained us? It might have gained us access to the administration office? Maybe. But I'm not even sure. I suppose it doesn't matter in the end. We're all done. We have the, we have the thing we wanted from this place. 
and a few extra odds and ends to boot. Back up the chain we go, and mission successful. M mission successful. It's got uh, access to the top floor. And now, the mutants have not helped us directly, in so much that they have never knew we were even here. So they'll have nothing to worry about from the, uh, what do they call them again? Serpentines? Yeah, serpentines. They won't have anything to worry about from the serpentines. Hopefully. Okay. Back we go. To the base, we report our success. Mission accomplished. I'm really, really enjoying all the different options the game gives to you for solving these puzzles now. It always... Underreal... Hmm, how to describe it? Underreal always gave you options in combat. But out of combat, I always found it was a little... Well, you didn't really have too many, too many other choices. The fact that we can now use our some of our miscellaneous skills, our stats come into play more often so far, at least. I really, really enjoy all this. It makes me want to increase my electronics more so I can pass the next test that we encounter. All right, we'll we'll pick a few. We'll pick a few pockets later. Alright, let's, um... I don't know who I'm bringing the hand to. First, we'll stop in and see... I don't I don't believe they have, but we'll stop in and see if the merchants have recycled. Oh, a lot of men. What do you have in stock? Nope. Still, um, still have to recycle their stuff. Oh, he has, though. Marcus has 200 bucks again. So, we'll vendor... Let's the amplifier. This. Plasma core. For most of the cash. I don't need this either. Nice! We're taking all this cash and a handful more of United Stations bucks. I should probably take these as well. If I was to sell you that, suddenly I'm going to lose out on a few things. Like, I'm sorry, I lose out on a few things. I'm with, uh, the trade is not equal. I want an equal trade. None of his energy cells are better. I don't need that adaptive knight uh, goggles. He's not selling EMP grenades. He is selling EMP grenades. We could also take some plasma cells. Okay, I think that's good. Let's make this trade. Still has not cycled his inventory. Let's store this stuff in our footlocker. Then we'll try turning Sec Trooper. We'll try to turn this stuff in. As you can see, I've dropped off a ton of crap here as well. MK2 bolt, add two of the rest of them. They don't need actually hold on a second. Oh, I don't can I make an EMP grenade? 
Oh, Tim, you need a dischargers if you want to make higher tier grenades. Oh, they don't even require batteries to use them, Tim. Okay, I'll know that for the future. We want to hold on to primary electromagnetic dischargers if I, if I find any. Okay, well, I don't need this many of you with us. The doctor's not here. Oh, that gave me an opportunity to, to do some snooping. Take the gas mask. Is that better than the helmet we currently have? It probably is, isn't it? Oh, it's not. And it weighs more, actually, as well. It's worse in every way. But it was free. What the heck? What, why can't I walk around? There you go. Some money. Oh, we have his... Oh my god! We get a plasma mine blueprint. That's amazing. We have his key so we can unlock all of this. We don't need another Navcom device. And we don't need a cigar. It is worth 6,000 bucks though, so I guess we should take that. And just like that, we saved ourselves $16,000. <laughs> an amazing amount of money I've saved for plasma mines. Okay, so where are we supposed to go then? I think we picked most of their pockets. Let's check this sec trooper. Didn't pick her pocket, but we are unwilling able to do so. She is too aware. All turret will see us trying to open anyone's foot lockers here. They don't did they didn't they tended not to have anything decent, so we will we'll not do that in the future. Hello, Doc. Did I pick your pocket yet? I think I did. I did not. Super health hypo. The most uh, the most powerful of healing concoctions. Do I want that or his key? We'll take the health hypo. Okay, let's also pop open our journal. Report to either Chief Briggs or Professor Oldfield once you've had it. So, Oldfield wasn't in this tent. Let's check down here. I think this is where Briggs was located. He's not here either, huh? A hundred lockpicking. Let's see what the good guy is hiding in here. Oh. Alright, just a bunch of stuff no one's gonna miss. More batteries. Uh-oh. It's like they're giving a speech of some sort. I'm hoping for lots of cool tech. Yeah, well, aren't we all, sir? I'm hoping for lots of cool tech in your pockets. Two severed bolts. Sticky, some sticky coins as well. You can stab someone with one of those. Good thing, good thing we took it. We'll pickpocket all these people and then we'll see what kind of conversations happening up there. Um, what do I want from you? I don't think we need more energy cells, not this moment. We'll take a morphine shot. I 
gonna get one of them. I don't think I need another key card, right? I have one already. I have one already, I don't think we need another. So we'll take his fusion cells. Hello. Oh, we have one of those too, don't we? We have a comm device. Oh, I thought I did. I know I have my nav comm device. Let's, uh, let's take this one. Nothing else really that I need on him. Let's keep the rest of that junk. Oh, they're not giving a talk. They're just standing there staring out. Guess it's some sort of ritual. Oh, I like the guy's t-shirt. We're not stealing anything from you except for bullets if I want them, and I don't really want bullets at the moment. S their snipers are really perceptive. Insufficient skill. Wow, they are indeed. The three familiar yet vastly different faces await your approach. Professor Oldfield greets you with a jubilant grin, Chief Briggs with a nod and his usual countenance whereas Seeger simply registers your presence before his eyes return to your anxious wandering around. Garrett, do you... have it? Do you have the microchip implant? Show them the severed arm. The image contaminates the professor's smile a bit. Seeger seems outright disgusted. Chief Briggs displays no emotion. Oh my, excellent work. Well done, well done. Seeger, how are we supposed to use these again? Do we just use it with that panel, or is there something else to it? I think... Professor, that one is just supposed to approach the, you know, the panel, and it'll open. He makes his hands into two gates and moves them apart. But I'm not exactly sure. That's what... what I got from the recovered data. Are you a right seeker? Hmm? Oh yes, Professor Oldfield. Oldfield? Yes, yes. You mentioned you wanted to scan the microchip. Yes, yes, yes! Seeger approaches you tentatively, revulsion mounting at his expression, and produces a small square device with a hand-sized display attached to it, and to a straight plastic handle. It does not appear to have anything but a single button on its right side. Seeger presses it, points the device at the disembodied arm, and stares at the screen, sw swiping and tapping it constantly. The bright light reflecting off of his face gives him the appearance of a proper pale corpse. You wonder whether it is actually the light that is responsible for his, uh, responsible or his detestation for a piece of an actual corpse you were holding. I'm getting something. A signal. Pulsing. Yes, it's repeating every few seconds. Garrett, how about you try opening the gate with that? I'll be next to you with the device and try to see if I can uh, ch catch any si any changes in the signal. Sec troopers, get in position. You two, be on your guard. This is like um, Stargate when they open it up for the first time. It displays nothing. Use Phil's severed arm. Sec Troopers, move in! At last! Uh, not much here. 
What we are really looking for has to be down. He inspects the elevator. It appears to be locked as well. Mind if I try this time? Go ahead. Okay, let's give it a shot. It works! I captured the signal you used to unlock the gate. It works! Well done, Seeger. We'll take it from here. Alright, team. Floor by floor. Radio in once everything is clear. Stay sharp. Fifteen to twenty minutes have passed before the team reports that the area has been secured and that the air is safe to breathe. The four of you step into the elevator and descend to the floor below. The elevator door opens and the room greets you with air that is thick and reeking of decay. The odor reminds you of the room you found Phil's body in, only here it is much stronger. Oh, the Seeger puts on his gas mask, not only to make it easier on his nostrils, but also to narrow and partially obscure the dreadful image before him, it seems. The professor plugs his nose, and even the chief seems to show some reaction to the malodorousness. Area is clear, sir. No signs of life. We haven't noticed any latent security systems either. These men, they were NFT soldiers. Appears so, sir. From the evidence we found so far, the majority of the soldiers killed each other. Those who remained standing committed suicide. Seeker reluctantly approaches one of the dead soldiers with his device. Two hollow eye sockets gaze at him from the ground, for he is probably the first man to approach them in centuries. He ushers his arm and scans the rotten hand on the ground while trying to keep the rest of his body as far back as possible. From the angle, you are able to see that what is on the device's screen. The screen displays a one flat line. This one's dead, I... This one's dead. I mean, the implant. No signal. They killed each other. My goodness. The barricades and positioning indicate that they were in a defensive position. Most likely laying in wait for Biocorp forces to come out of the elevator. Now, all the bodies we've inspected have unnatural, distorted bone structure. Mutagen. That would also that would also explain the friendly fire and the suicides. Seeger flinches and looks at the sec trooper, then the chief. The air is free from harmful particles. We've performed all necessary scans. I would advise against touching the bodies before Doc Savage inspects them, though. Are there any other exits from the area? Yes, sir. There is a gate leading east. The signs say it leads to shelters and evacuation tunnels. Take us to it. So, this is it. Amazing. Professor, for security reasons, I will have to confine you to this area for now. There seems to be enough material here for your staff to work with. We'll keep this gate sealed until Recovery Team Alpha returns. And I have more spare men to send to investigate these evacuation tunnels. We need to keep our defenses tight in case the natives launch another attack. No signal here either. What gives? Interjects Seeger. Or would if anyone paid attention to him. I will leave several sec troopers to guard you at all times. I understand, Chief, I understand. Whatever you say must be done. He smiles again as his eyes are peering into the room around him. But finally, finally we are inside. I can't believe it. All this effort might actually pay off. No, nothing here either. Zit! Scratches his head. I volunteered to search those evacuation tunnels. Noted, but the time is not right yet. He looks at the professor, then back at you. 
Even though by now you don't expect to read anything on his face, there was a hint there that he is pleased with what you've done. Or it might just be the lighting. Speak to Marcus about your paycheck. We will leave the professor and his staff to their work. I will grant you some rest if you're feeling tired. You've earned it, after all. If you're up for more work, however, there are a few things that need to be done around the camp to solidify your defenses. Do I want to go back and pick up more equipment from our home? I don't think I need rest. We have plenty of equipment on us already. I would like my paycheck, though. But we, we can do that maybe on our way up anyway. I'm good, sir. What do you, uh... What do you need me to do? Marcus will brief you on that. Okay, this one shot himself three times in the head. He didn't... Couldn't kill himself with the first two bullets. He turns off his device and faces you. You were right. Without his device's illumination, he is as pale as a corpse. I will be in my tent if I'm needed. It sounds like these troopers were trying to prevent something from happening themselves. They were obviously mutating. And they killed each other, anyone who could, and then the remaining ones killed themselves to stop themselves from fully mutating to something. The hand chips are probably dead. Maybe because they didn't want anyone to access the evacuation tunnels for fear that there's something horrible in them. Well, it's gonna do no good down here. Might as well take... If we can loot this stuff, we're looting it. He boosts his glasses and rubs his eyes and temples. This damn migraine. Then he notices you. Ah, Garrett. Well, Phil, what can you tell me about Seeger? Ah, Jeremy. Yes, good fellow. One of the finest students at the... Faculty of Information Technologies, and the head of the university's IT center. And he's been an assistant of mine in that field for a few years now. Even though his appearance might not suggest it in the least. Ah, nothing special for us southerners, really. Regular street looks. Yes, I've seen it enough in Core City. But goodness me, he wasn't like that. He looked normal, by our standards at least. It all began with his recent move to Hexagon. Tell me about that. Hexagon is the second largest city in North Underrail, second only to this. But once you step into it, it... it it's as if you stepped into another world. It's a tech hub, a haven for tech heads and tech criminals alike, but to me, it looks more like tech slums, with all the stores, augmentation shops, cyber centers, tech armories, all crammed together in this confined vertical space that is Hexagon. Say nothing. There are some things you can only find in Hexagon, and that I can understand. But by the caverns, this recent virtual mixed reality, whatever it is, craze that spread among the hexagonians has captivated, magnetized Germany as well. I was seriously considering taking someone else to this expedition, fearing he'd show up with a visible ocular implant or some other kind of augmentation, done in some shoddy hexagonian shop. You should have seen some of those people. Seeger's appearance is just a mild case of exposure to hexagonian depravity. People going crazy augmenting themselves, then. But... He's an expert in what he does. Now I needed him here. Tell me about the super corporations. Security Agency, Bionic Institute, Nucleus Corporation, Transcendex. Alongside Biocorp and NFT, they were the T6. The six super corporations of the predescent times. The old world, if you prefer. Tell me about the other four. 
As far as it's known, in the years before the descent, the end of history, as some of the old records call it, there were six super corporations, so-called multinational or transnational corporations, all members of the T6 group. Their super corporations were, by the end, the most powerful political entities of the pre-descent world. I think we read this already, didn't we? What is the T6 group exactly? At some point in pre-descent history, this group was formed in order for the super corporations to collectively maintain, negotiate, and defend their interests primarily against nation states, which were these political entities unified by wholly different factors than those of the super corporations. Oh, what were these? Well, Garrett, in simple terms, a nation is an old concept wherein the political identity of a certain people matches their cultural identity. Take a group of people speaking the same language, sharing the same territory, origin, ethnicity, and mentality, and give them consciousness of their political identity. Imagine all South Underrailers united under the same banner, so to speak, and working toward the same goals, and being comprised of people who are very much alike. Currently, there is no unity, but each station has its own interests and its own way of life. I see. So, he's talking about basically countries. And those no longer exist. Now it's uh, now an under at least a South Underrail. They're cities, not countries. Could there be nation states? Uh, nation stations? Goodness me. I, well, huh, I won't say it can't be done, but nation states were large communities spanning great territories. Stations are small, minuscule in comparison. The word nation simply implies something greater than that, at least to me. Of course, as with many things in life, how nations define themselves or what other nations was often a matter of debate, disagreement, and violent conflicts, but that's a whole nother topic. Hi, right, Professor. I'll see you later. Let's talk with Seeger, and then we'll go see Marcus. He flinches and spills some of his coffee over his pants. Zit! 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 He pulls down his trainers to his knees, revealing deep black underpants with overlapping columns of bright green symbols. He grabs a filthy handkerchief in his pocket and starts rubbing the stains. He scared the crap out of me! I'd say I scared the trainers off of you. Funny, huh? He makes a grimace. I almost burned my... Bits. He puts up his trainers. What is it, man? What can you tell me about the AFRID microchips? AFRID stands for Active Radio Frequency Identification. Basically, basically, it means that the microchip has its own power source, as opposed to passive chips, which get powered by a reader. The data I've recovered, with a lot of effort, tells me that the NFT used these chips originally for storing personal and medical history, to monitor the host's health status and to keep track of their location. I don't know how the microchip is being powered, by a battery or even by the host itself, but I bet they did a good job on it, considering everyone's got them. So when did the, the authorization come into the picture? The log mentions just that. It seems that the NFT didn't really have much need for authorization checks, okay? But they implanted the system to make it more difficult for Biocorp to enter their facilities. Considering they never made it into the keep, it worked. It seems like the, that the implant does not need a live host to function. It's neither being powered by the host, nor is a living one necessary to pass the authentication and authorization checks. Luckily for us, that appears to be the case. That's Excel right there. It probably has a battery. As for the second, either it's an oversight on FTP's part, or... I don't know. There could be something we're missing. Have you tried pulling the hand out of the glove, huh? No, I'd rather not touch if I don't ha need to. I hear you, it's extreme. Damn. That's it. Anyway, I'll, uh, you know, take one of the microchips from a body in the keep and figure out how the thing is working, okay? Once I've got time, I'll let you know what I discovered. Okay, could you just take a look at this for me? Ah, that's an NPC. Give it here. I can extract data from these neat little devices. So if you come across more of them, bring them to me. Oh, this is the flat device we picked up from, uh, from the guy. Can they be repaired? Hardly. These things are old. But they're data storage drives. Now those things are high quality. Well, a lot of data does end up being unrecoverable in the end. I have had great success so far. You bring me NPCs, and I'll put everything I managed to recover on my PC in the tent. Feel free to browse the files once I'm done. In fact, you know, there's one already there. 
It's from one of the NFTC soldier NPCs. Check it out. Okay, now, let's see what we got. Done. I managed to cross some interesting stuff. Send it to Professor Oldfield right away. Tell me about Hexagon. Professor already told me a bit about it, but I'd like to hear more. He did? Okay. Well, this may be the capital of North Underwale. Hexagon is the capital of technology. It's like this microcosm of everything high-tech. A place where you can find pretty much every extreme thing, okay? So how did you end up in here? A friend of mine took me there. We needed some network equipment, and one of his acquaintances there had the best stuff. Hexagon's a pretty confusing place. It's like this tall tower with many floors, each one packed with narrow, maze-like passages leading to all sorts of these... extra places. Naturally, the place is home to all kinds of tech gangs and various factions. The Protectorate got no presence there, nope. You gotta be careful where you tread or who you're dealing with, because if you're not, you might find yourself face to face with... I don't know, a cyborg mugger or a tech harvester. Ugh. Usually I'd stay out of that place, but that friend, he knows his way around. I just kept my head down and followed. But then, after I was introduced to XR, I bought this living cube and... He, and then he shuts up. Go on. Forget I mentioned it. It's some meaningless hexagonian slang. Forget about it, man. Alright, I'll leave you to your work. Appreciate it. Bye. Some of the bones show signs of extreme deformity. There are bullet holes in his uniform as well. There are three exit holes in the back of his severely enlarged skull. I can't even begin to imagine the pain. Holy crap. Both of his legs are missing. He shot himself in the head with his rifle. There are skull fragments all around him. He was shot in the head from behind. One of his arms is about one and a half times longer than the other. Oh my god. jet ski if we need to. Let's pick this guy's pocket and then we'll go and find Marcus. One thing only we're taking from him. Take the fusion cells. Probably shouldn't be looting so many of them because if we get attacked they might be using that to recharge their, uh, their equipment. I should be sticking to like um, poison morphine or the like probably. Before we hit up Marcus, let's visit our... Actually, no, we should visit Marcus and them first. Maybe they recycled their equipment already. Hey there, fellow Southerner. Let me see what you have in stock. He has not yet recycled his equipment. Hey, Garrett. What do you need? I'm here to collect my paycheck. Okay, Garrett, let me see. Here you go. He hands you 650 Stygian coins. I've yet to get used to these Stygian coins. I still think in terms of blues. United States dollars, I mean. Have you managed to discover anything useful in the Keep about the island's defenses? Yes, we did. The Keep gave us great insight into how the defenders organized and managed the defenses, as well as how the automated defense systems functioned. There's no point discussing the island's fortification, so I'll go straight to the automatic defenses. The smaller statuesque plasma turrets, and the larger, more powerful plasma cannons. Apparently, their primary tactic was to use the smaller turrets with the higher rate of fire to deplete the energy shields of enemy ships, so the more powerful projectiles could pass through once the shields collapsed. 
At this stage, the turrets would target weak points, or based on their priorities, select other targets, or to a limited degree complement the active protection system. The what? Uh, there are two components to the APS system, the hard kill and soft kill countermeasures. Hard kill are the ones in which missiles and other projectiles are prevented from hitting their targets, targets belonging to the defenders, by physically intercepting and destroying them, like shooting them down with the turrets, although there are various other APS units installed. And soft kill are measures that rely on some kind of interference, like electromagnetic or acoustic, that target sensors inside the projectiles. And whatever got past the APS still had the powerful enough energy shields to, to be contended with. All in all, the NFT truly had a highly advanced system with some unique solutions. Like contemporary systems, everything could both be centrally controlled or could function autonomously. Combat statues were also a part of the system, sending and receiving their targeting information. Damn, Mark, I couldn't understand half of what you were saying. The only active protection system I use is not taking a bath. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's all we managed to learn. If you haven't already, go speak with Seeger. He recovered a log from one. I think a security marine. Haven't read it yet, but I've been told it contains some information regarding the final moments from the battle. Anything I can do to help with the camp's defenses? Uh, there is something you can do. NFT had plenty of automated defenses deployed to this island, but most of it is destroyed, but perhaps there's something we can still use if we knew how, and that is something you can potentially discover during the course of your assignments. You can go uh, and zone out the savages, that'd solve our problems. Tone. You can't expect him to attack the natives all on his own. Or can you? Also, contact me if you find any functional military equipment, and I'll dispatch a boat to just transport it to the camp if possible. It's not much to go on, I know, but hopefully something will come up. And... He's got a handful of stuff. I suppose we should... S um, by that, I mean he's got United States dollars. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get a handful of them. Oh, he's not buying anymore. Okay, let's trade for that then. Alright, let's put this stuff in our footlocker. And I guess we'll read a little more? And then we'll probably have to call the session. But we've been playing for almost an hour already. Wow, I do not need 15 of these. was down this way. Oh, uh, are you selling anything, Doctor? Out of smokes? Oh, oh my god! Shut up! I, I mean, uh, listen. I better not talk about it. Just, I better not talk about it. Do, do you need, do you need anything? I'm sorry, I, 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 I thought that was the barter button. I don't even know why I asked them. <laughs> Uh, I need some medicine. Uh, this is what I wanted to see. Uh, he's buying five medicines, and there's nothing I think I have a whole lot of extra with. So, nope, we don't need any of that. University of Dis, Black Sea, Recovered NPC Data. We'll read about one of these at the moment. Let's, uh, let's read about Bridges Phil from the West Storage Depot, the device we brought back. Personal Log, LE 1310-122. Bayan taught himself how to use tools, how to make clothes, how to tame fire, and how to express himself through art. Man raised cities, built machines, traversed the world, rose above the clouds, conquered the sky, and invaded the beyond. Oh, yeah, sorry, and invaded the beyond. Man envisioned the future and brought it to the present. Man is, without a shadow of a doubt, intelligent. 
but when some men decide to encase a power substitution unit in a heavy overload stone that can only be handled by a straw man or some other machinery before a technician like me can perform maintenance, one begins to question this intellectually technological evolution of mankind. Maybe it's not man. Mankind possesses vast, striving intellect. But only certain men is it those men who drive civilizations forward. For one takes a perfectly functional and reliably setter generator design, decides to decorate it as to the missing Lemurian style, one should perhaps apply some common sense and take practicality into consideration. Using more magical materials, missing, designing the unit, man or two could open it on their own with simple tools. Because today, I had to wait for three hours for a straw man to finally become available so I could begin working. Three hours. So it looks like this guy is ranting about how they did this amazing amount of art on this um, panel. And he can't access it to repair it because of what they've done. He's got to wait instead for one of these uh, the robots to show up, remove it, and then he can fix it. Oh, there's just some more. Other corporations take on the unit less visually attractive than ours. Certainly, some are sinfully repulsive. Even they are all made to be as easy to use and maintain as possible. Always be of primary concern, even if the earlier NFT designs followed the same sensible principle. Current models have a front panel, which gives access to most components. But in order to reach the generator core, I need the help of a pair of inhuman hands. And when a strong man in possession of such is unavailable, Wait. For three hours. Sounds like he's saying that at one point, NFT was similar to other companies. Sounds like, on one hand, he actually likes the way it looks, but it is extremely impractical. Of course, these kinds of delays are unacceptable, yet there is nothing any one of us is able to do about it. The Lemurian style, forefront of everything, presses architecture, clothing, vehicle, and vessel design, and even the simplest items like box containers, crates, and nail clippers. Everything must be pleasing to the eye, even if it doesn't need to. It is wonderful in one sense, for art, expression, Stimulus for the human intellect and emotion, pure and limitless. Visual art of the highest kind. Exposed female breasts of the most well-endowed kind. As I've already stated, just an expression of the human mind. Male mind. Yeah! Visual elements combined contribute to the perception that one is truly living in an ideal environment. Known and scientifically proven that an environment pleasing to the senses highly positive effect on the human well-being until one has performed certain kinds of tasks. That is, in which case the beauty quickly turns into beast. For longer than three hours. Must add. <laughs> It's really, really, really angry about this. But at the same note, we're getting... This is really amazing. We're getting a idea of how the architecture of NFT, their designs, how important it was for them and their corporation. So the art looks like it had a very female bent to it. But we've fought now these... Um, I forget what they're called. The strongmen. And I would imagine that they're, they're very masculine. Um, they looked like, like, we saw their awesome asses. Like, that that looks pretty good, right? I, I guess, if you're into that sort of thing. So, uh, holy crap. Powerful robots that, that, that are, uh, that have, that have good butts. Have good butts. Infuriating. First time I have had this happen to me. I have work to do, and a specific amount of time allotted to do it. Complications like this are not only an unneeded setback, Quite distressing. Just the other day, I performed repairs on the medication synthesis unit in the at the Nexus. Awful application of decocentric design may be spent many frustrating hours. Frustrating problems. 
Not the difficulty of the task that is the problem in and of itself, but it's a difficulty that could have been avoided entirely had the designer thought of something other than just appearance. Uh, so this is kind of an issue with uh, programming and code as well. Uh, everyone, for programmers, whenever you walk into someone else's code, you're always going to be kind of critical of it. Like, why do it this way? Why not do it this way instead? This is overly complicated. This is too simple. This is unneeded. This, this is needed and stuff like that. Though I can definitely see his uh, complaint that he has to wait for someone to remove a panel for three hours. That seems like no matter what, that's a, that's a poor design choice. Maybe they could have used a different type of um, substance, not stone. Maybe some sort of like plastic, hard uh, ceramic or something like that. However, I suppose the real truth here is that the strongmen are being transferred back and forth in order to prepare our defenses. The problems I described never occurred earlier since strongmen were always available. The designer made the units with servants in mind, that they would always be... aid us. Should he be blamed for it? Which is what I am doing now? No, I should not be blaming him. Instead, I should be blaming myself for giving in under the pressure of the impending war, which could possibly mean our doom. Okay, that was pretty interesting. Um, I think we're done. Yeah, I think we're done at the moment, everyone. Let's, yeah, let's call it quits here. When we come back, I guess we'll head down and continue to explore a little bit more of this area. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.